everyone. It's 3.30 p.m. on Monday, May 4th, 2020. Thank you for joining us. This is Janet Hill at the Rock Island County Health Department. Today we have with us Nita Ludwig at Rock Island County and Ed Rivers at Scott County. The speakers will have prepared statements and then we'll answer your questions to the best of their abilities at the end. Uh, please indicate in your question in the chat box who you want to answer. Uh, the question and answer section will be moderated by Brooke Barnes of Scott County. Nita, please start us off with the reporting of Rock Island County's numbers. Sure. So we are saddened today to report that two more Rock Island County residents have passed away from COVID-19. And we want to encourage all of the other residents in the county to continue to be vigilant by staying home as much as you possibly can and wearing face coverings when you're out for your essential trips. By protecting ourselves, that is the best way to protect these older populations who are at most vulnerable of this disease in the community. Um, we also are reporting 22 new COVID-19 cases, which brings our total to 491, and currently 22 patients are hospitalized. In Scott County, we have a total of 245 cases with 2,788 tests. That's about 8.8% positive. The Iowa Department of Public Health announced last week that it would increase the follow-up activities completed by local health departments in response to the spread of COVID-19 in the state. As a result, Scott County Health Department and our partner County Health Departments will begin expanded contact tracing. Since the middle of March until last week, our staff followed up on positive cases of COVID-19 in Scott County by completing an interview with the person who tested positive or a close family member if it's not possible to talk with the family uh, with the case, determining who their household contacts were and providing guidance on how to prevent the spread of illness, determining when their symptoms began to determine their timeline for home isolation, assisting them in contacting their employer and determining the plan the employer has in place for responding to a positive case of COVID-19, and following up with the individuals periodically until they've completed home isolation. Later this week, public health staff will be expanding their case follow-up, also known as contact tracing, to include all contacts an individual may have had in the 48 hours prior to when they first started showing symptoms. Contacts include individuals who they may have been physically near, closer than six feet, for longer than 30 minutes. New data suggests that the most infectious period for an individual is just before they begin to show symptoms. These changes to the guidance reflect public health's effort to take what we now know and respond accordingly. That's why our messages of staying home and keeping your distance from others, even if you aren't sick, are still so very important. When the spread of COVID-19 in our community slows, that doesn't mean it will stop. We must continue to respond as a community, and we are only as strong as the most vulnerable among us. Stay home and save lives. And as a reminder, all Scott County residents are encouraged to complete the testiowa.com assessment to help gather information on the spread of COVID-19 in the state of Iowa. Go ahead, Nita, we can hear from you next. The COVID-19 pandemic brings unprecedented emotional and physical worries and economic strain to Quad City residents. We are pleased to share with you two community efforts to ease the sum of that pain. Rock Island County Health Department has partnered with Western Illinois Diaper Bank and another local organization to offer free diapers from the health department. This, um, this is going to be a drive-through event and it's gonna be this Thursday from 10 a.m. till noon here at the Health Department building at 2112 25th Avenue in Rock Island. Families can receive 50 diapers per child from Loving Bottoms and Heine Heroes. 
each child must be present in the car to get the, the diapers. Loving Bottoms is based in Galesburg, but the Heine Heroes is a Quad City organization. The diaper pickup is on Thursday. It's for Rock Island County residents only at this time, but Heine Heroes does intend to host an event for Scott County residents soon. Diaper strains the finances of many families, even in COVID, non-COVID-19 times. According to Heine Heroes, one in three families report having a diaper need. Disposable diapers can cost up to $80 a month per child, and no state or federal safety net program allows benefits for diapers. Heine Heroes offers help to local families through the generosity of others. If you wish to donate to this 501c3 organization, visit their website at heineheroes.com. It's H-I-N-E-Y-H-E-R-O-E-S.com. All donations are tax exempt. The other community event we've learned will honor the 21 Quad Cityans who have lost their lives due to COVID-19. One Human Family, QCA, Quad Cities Interface, and many other organizations and faith-based communities will come outside with proper social distancing and face coverings at 3 p.m. this Wednesday, May the 6th, to ring bells or make noise as, as, as you can to remember those who have lost their lives from this virus. This kind of community gesture will not bring back those we've lost, but it does remind us that we're all in this together. One Human Family, visit onehumanfamilyqca.org. Thank you. Thank you, Ed and Nita. Appreciate your um, information for today. We do have a couple of questions that have been posted, so we'll go to those first. Um, please type any questions that you have into the chat. First, we'll start um, with Ed. Peak numbers are changing to the best of your estimates. When will we see peak in the Quad Cities? And then we'll go to Nita after that. Well, it depends on which model you look at. I generally uh, reference the IHME website as it's one of the most quoted in the national media. It says we reached our uh, deaths per day peak on May 2nd and the hospital resource use peak on April 28th. Again, those are um, models and so neither of us or really anyone can say exactly when we will peak, but, but that is the general feeling in Illinois as well is that we are still at least probably a week away or so. Thank you. Um, we did have a question on the total number of new cases in Scott County for today, which Ed has typed in the chat there. So um, from yesterday to today, there is four additional cases, positive COVID cases for Scott County. And then Nita, can you verify the total COVID-19 related deaths in Scott County, or excuse me, Rock Island County? Sure, so to the two today that we're reporting brings our total death count to 14 for Rock Island County. I'm a follow up to that. Any of the deaths related to Tyson or another workplace? Uh, these two today are not related to Tyson or another space. Thank you again. If you have any additional questions, please type those into the chat. Another question for you, Nita. Have the Tyson numbers changed since Friday? Uh, they have changed since Friday. I just checked before I came into the meeting today, and the state is reporting 96 confirmed cases related to Tyson. So that's, I think, four more than was reported on Friday. Okay, thank you. Seeing no additional questions, we're going to conclude the briefing for today. Um, we thank you all for joining us. Thank you again to Ed and Nita, and we look forward to talking with you again later this week. Have a good day, everybody.